Hey there, fellow agents. This is Agent Smith, and we are playing Curse of Monkey Island, the third in the in the quintilogy. And uh, this is the third episode as well. So in the previous one, we basically looked a little bit around the island, not even really going far. We ended up going to speak to the voodoo lady, and she had so much to talk to us about. So we ended up uh, spending an entire time getting exposition. But it's good, though. So now we're in the town. We can go ahead and take a look around. The Surgeon General of Plunder Island has determined that ingredients in this product may be harmful or fatal if swallowed. Hmm. So don't drink the lemonade? Five cents. It's a mug for the lemonade. How inspiring. A budding young entrepreneur. Hello there, Sonny. You open yet? Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> My first customer. Gee willikers, is this gonna be swell? Hi, my name's Kenny. Kenny Foulmouth. It sure would be neat if you would buy some of my lemonade. It only costs a nickel. And best of all, I have a bottomless mug policy. That does sound like a good deal. Yeah, it's all the lemonade I want for one nickel. Is the lemonade good? Oh, gosh, yes. It's a very helpful drink. Even better for you than placing leeches on your tongue. Wow. Mm. What's the lemonade good for? It's a dandy tonic for scurvy. It'll cure all your symptoms, including, but not limited to, gradual weakening, aching muscles, sunken eyes, painful gums, ashen skin, loss of teeth, internal bleeding, the reopening of old wounds, diarrhea, <laughs> kidney failure, fainting, halitosis, and death. Wow, that's some really good uh, fruit there. <laughs> No joke, though. It's actually all the way into World War II we still have people dying from scurvy. Will it cure evil pirate curses? No, but it has a refreshing citrus flavor with no unpleasant aftertaste. Huh. What's the lemonade oh, good no for? Shit. Drinking. Oh. Oh, good. Oh, thank God he shortened it down. It's good for drinking. <laughs> I'd like to buy some lemonade. Sure. We have a bottomless mug policy, you know. That'll be a nickel. There you go. Oh. Hey, there's no bottom to this mug. Give me my money back. I'm sorry. I did tell you about our bottomless mug policy. And there are no refunds. Oh, Why, you little sneak. Thank you. Come again. All right, well, I guess we'll have to. We will come back later. I'll get my revenge on you. It's a great big vat full of red dye. Number two. Hmm. Danger Cove. What's this one say? Danger, do not enter. Okay. I don't think they want us to go this way. Beware. There's all these little signs everywhere, too. Bush, a pristine example of one of the many decorative bushes used for landscaping Plunder Island. Good to know. That would stain my fingers red. Well, I could turn things red if I ever need to. So far, I don't think I have anything that needs to be done that way, but we'll see. A walkthrough speaker. Blonde Beard's Chicken Shop. It's the two-way speaker for the walkthrough. Oh. Uh, hello? I can't understand you. What was that? <laughs> eh, forget it. He said, Welcome to Blondbeard's Chicken. Can I take your order now? I think that's what he said. It's a chicken coop, but I don't see any chickens. Yeah, they're all free. Feeling down because your chicks turned to gold? Come to the swamp. Get your fortune told. Voodoo and things. Formerly just voodoo. Visit our new location on Plunder Island. It's as thick as gravy. There's so many things to check out, it's a ridiculous amount of stuff all over the screen. Even the path, mysterious flowers. Hmm. What a strange flower. Wow, this jungle is thick. I'll need something mm -hmm. sharp if I'm gonna hack my way through there. What's this sign say? Ipecac, Cephalus Ipecacuana. One of the creeping vines common throughout Plunder Island. The syrup made from the Ipecac flowers was used by the early settlers of Plunder Island as a purgative. Yep. Make you purge. 
I can't carry it all. I need to cut through it. Well, I just wanted some. Jeez. I don't have a sword, so I can't help you there, buddy. Let's see if we can go through this mysterious door. I sure can. And it takes you out somewhere else. Oh, jeez. Oh my goodness, this town is big. It let me out. Shit, where am I? Okay, over here. <laughs> Alright, well, let's head back the way I came. Check out this other place. It's a nice village in comparison to most of the towns we see in this game series. It's an old crow's nest, converted into a sign for the chicken shop. Smart. Let's go check out this chicken shop. Oh, hey. Do you have a reservation? Hmm. No. Uh, no. No reservation slip, huh? Then out you go. Oh, hey, hey. Do you have a reservation? I just wanted to look around. Of course I have a reservation. Then let's see your reservation slip. No reservation slip, huh? Gotta make way for paying customers. Dang, I guess I have to use the, the walkthrough if I want to get into that. Hmm. All right. Well, I guess it took us to this side of town for a good reason. Let's see. We've got a little alleyway here. Go head down to the fountain. We've got this theater. Looks like there's a back door. In memory of the chickens who gave their lives during the Great Puerto Pollo Potluck Jamboree of 1621. Mm, no. The front door is closed. Well, open it. It's locked. Oh. Good evening. At the tone, Caribbean Standard Time will be 8, 40, 4, and 50. Three seconds. Beep. No joke. That was right on time. It is actually 8.45 p.m. where I'm playing right now. I'm not in the Caribbean, but that's pretty cool. This clock is actually accurate. To your game, of course. I mean, it's reading their windows, probably, but that's not the point. It's an old travel trunk. It's covered with stickers from many faraway places. It's stuck to the trunk. I don't want the stickers. I want to open the trunk. It looks too heavy for me to carry. Take some spears. I don't need a prop. Looks like a nice coat. With just a few flakes of unsightly dandruff. Looks too big for me. Oh, but I take I the dandruff. I hate people to think less of this guy just because of a slight problem with... Hey, this isn't dandruff. Oh. Ew. Hopefully it doesn't get all over me. I only got lice now. The mirror? Mm, no. Oh, the mirror mirror. I wonder if there's a part in this play for. A dashing rogue pirate. I don't want to disturb the mystic powers of the hat. It's empty. Or is it? Or is it? It's very mod. I'll take it. No, I like the natural look. Fake sword? I don't need a prop. It's stuck to the trunk. Eh. What else we got? What else we got? Let's go out to the stage, since I'm in the theater now. To swab or not to swab? No, no, that's not right. Come on, Slappy. You've got to get this right. Slappy. This today. Ahoy. I'm a dangerous pirate. Who are you? Cromwell. Slappy Cromwell. It's not my real name, actually. My agent told me my given name just didn't have star quality. So what slappy? was your given name? Rex Fortune, adventure seeker. I see. Huh. <laughs> What's that putrid, stench-ridden drivel that you're rehearsing? But this, this is the master work of the bard. Do you really think it's that bad? Do pirates drink grog? Oh, I knew I shouldn't have altered the material. How could I have taken up my wretched pen and stabbed it bodkin-like through the unsullied poetry of the master? You rewrote Shakespeare? Yeah, who write, re yeah. Who rewrites Shakespeare? Not a single person was coming to any of my performances. 
Oh, these stupid, brutish pirates! Not men enough to confront their own sensitive inner natures. So I rewrote the whole folio, contracted the brilliance of decades into a 45-minute review. Not a bad idea, I suppose. Beer! A theatrical midday. Why can't you go back to the original scripts? Pirates oh, like the it. sweet, sweet, bitter irony of it all. Now that you have confirmed that I have produced a work of unredeemable trash, I'm more or less guaranteed to have a financial success on my hands. Yep. Why do I find that strangely encouraging? <laughs> That's exactly how it goes, too. Can I watch you rehearse your horrible play? I'd rather you didn't. I get nervous when people watch. Of how, course. How do you act? Can I join your show? Let me be blunt. You just don't have the hands of a spear carrier. You have no idea how often I hear that. <laughs> Please, can I watch you rehearse? I'd rather you didn't. And stop whining. Acting is my life. Let me join your show. I, I was a tree in my kindergarten play. We already have a tree. Oh. Mm, I can fix that. All right, Carry all right. on. I'll let you guys continue. Then I kill Caesar. Follow that up with a little soft shoe. Prop tree. Fake trees of this genus were often used by early settlers for theatrical productions. I don't remember. Hmm. Is the water ballet before or after my mad scene? A pirate by any other name would steal. So how'd you get roped into doing this show? I'm a spokesmodel, actually. No. Oh. But what I really want to do is act. People just don't take you seriously when you're a spokesmodel. Oh, yeah. How surprising. Yeah, isn't it? Break a peg leg. Thanks. Next, I burn thieves, subdue its army, trample Well, there seems to be anywhere else to go with this. Guess I'll head on out of here. Go explore I some more of the town. The watermelon. Thought maybe I could go up. Oh, I can go upstairs. Uh oh. Turns out the stairs turn this direction. I thought it was right there. It smells like something's burning. Mm, must be this shoddy 17th century electrical wiring. Wait a second. Somebody's been monkeying around with these controls. Literally. I'll need to read the instructions before they'll work. Mm. I'll need to read the instructions before they'll work. Mm. I'll need to read the instructions before they'll work. Well... Where are the instructions? It's like a combination of these things are going to do something. Mm. All right, I'll all right. The instructions before they'll work. I hope they don't mean like the literal instructions. So that might be a tough one for getting to. All right. Well, we'll head on out of here and work our way through the rest of the town. That's a door that took us to the other side. So that's a fast travel door. We got nothing else going on here in that Texas town that way. Let's head down to the port. See about this Barbary Coast. Welcome, patron, to the Barbary Coast, where every haircut is an adventure. Aye, and if you're wanting a haircut, you'll have to wait until I'm finished with Captain Rottingham here. Are you guys pirate barbers? We prefer the term buccaneer hairstylists. Great! Maybe you guys can help me find this huge diamond ring I'm looking for. Diamond ring? Yeah, it's supposedly enormous, and it's on Blood Island. Blood Island? Never Blood heard Island. of it. It's a funny story, really. I needed to lift this curse. It's turned my girlfriend into a solid gold statue. Solid gold? Wait a second. Did I just share too much? Yeah, sounds like it. Uh, this guy right here, I'm like almost positive that's uh, Scrooge McDuck. What is his name? Barber Pirate. 
your name, Barber Pirate? Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, and I'm a mighty pi- Quiet! Red... Huh? Don't distract him while he's working on me! Aye, laddie. You'll have to wait your turn. It's the pirate we. It sure is. <laughs> that is the actor who does the voice of uh, Scrooge McDuck from the DuckTales series from back in the day. The old one, not the new one coming out. Fine, fine. Let me talk to the Dapper Pirate then. Ahoy there. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, Mighty Pirate. Of course you are. Okay then. Who are you? Edward Van Helgen. Not the... That's right. Mine is the name that pirates fear the most. Ooh. Edward Snugglecakes Van Hell. Oh. Dude! How would you like to join my ever-growing pirate crew? Your crew? Why would I want to be on your crew? It's gonna be a blast. It's We're going to Blood, Blood Island. Island, man. Sorry, Threepwood. As much as I'd love to be out at sea again, I could never serve a captain who wasn't a gentleman and who wasn't my equal. All right, all right. I am a gentleman, you big old bedwetting duty head. Yeah. Then prove it. If you can defeat me in a gentleman's duel, I'll join your crew. All right, let's get to dueling. No, no, no. There are rules. If you want to duel with me, you have to give me sufficient insults. Mm, okay. Oh, we're playing this. How appropriate. You fight like a cow. That's an old one. Come back when you have some fresher material, eh? Oh, Lord. Are we doing this again? Did I mention you're a big old bedwetting duty head? As a matter of fact, you did. And I'm not impressed. Nice cologne you're wearing. Did you actually roll around in dung or just dab a little behind oh. your chair? That's not the type of insult I had in mind. Hey, that's a nice shirt. How long have you been colorblind? Oh, please. Yeah. I don't want to insult good. you. Why can't we just get along? You went from pirating to hairstyling. Why? The music of the sea is something that takes hold of your soul and never lets go. But the life of a sailor is a rough one, and the sea shows no mercy. It was no easy choice to leave, but I realized that I could still enjoy the music of the sea while remaining safely on land. Through affordably priced sea shanty compilation albums? Uh, no. By starting a barbershop quartet, obviously. Well, there's only three obviously, of you. But there are only three of you. Auditions didn't go as well as we'd hoped. Oh. We once had a tenor named Dominique, but he left. Artistic differences. Hmm. Hmm. You still haven't explained why you chose hairstyling. Well, we spent so much time coming up with a clever name for the shop, we realized we were going to have to give up singing and actually become barbers. But I still like to think that we're not just cutting hair. That maybe, just maybe, we're teaching people a little bit about themselves. Yeah, you say so, man. Are you truly happy with this line of work? I may return to the sea one day. But for now, I'm happy helping pirates look their very best. At least until we find a fourth for our barbershop quartet. Yeah, I suppose so. I could be your fourth. I could be the fourth for your barbershop quartet. Uh, no, no, uh, that's okay. I, I was wrong. We don't need one after all. Oh, come on. I've really got away with a ballad. All right, then. Let's hear what you've got. Hmm. <clears throat> Once my old man spoke to good King Triton and asked, Why all this senseless fighting? Why can't we men express emotion? Now I've got a friend in the... Oh, my dear sweet merciful Aww. savior in heaven. Pretty good, huh? You must take an oath now, before man and God, that you will never ever again sing in public. But... So, what are you telling me exactly? I'm so good that, uh... Uh, you don't want to hear any more singing before others get it? I bet you have a ton of cool pirate stories. No, I couldn't. Oh, come on. I'd really like to hear some of... The year was 1675. We were on a course towards the wreck of the rattling phlegm. Our days were filled with songs of the voyage and the untold riches we'd find at our destination. Two months into our journey, 
we realized something was horribly wrong. Hmm. Were you haunted by the spiteful ghost of a former captain? No. A restless spirit would have been a welcome relief compared to the evil we faced. We were all stricken with a melody, a diabolical song that I shall never forget. La 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 That is hard to get hey, out of your head. Hey, that's kind of catchy. Aye. All too catchy for a crew of 50 men confined to a ship hundreds of miles from port. No one could think of anything else, and many threw themselves into the sea rather than hear any more of the incessant humming. We returned with but eight of our crew left. The doomed voyage of the Obsessivo Compulsivo will haunt me forever. <laughs> Obsessivo Compulsivo. <laughs> all right, all right. Whoa, look at the time. Got a scoop. They give me more options to try to deal with him, but... What about you, salty pirate? Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood, mighty pirate. So? So, it's good to meet you, Mr... Bill. Bill? That's your pirate name, Bill? Cutthroat Bill. Mm. Oh, I see. Well, that puts a whole new spin on it, doesn't it? It does. Are you ever going back to pirating? Maybe. Someday. If I find the right captain. Perfect. I'll be your captain. Onward to Blood Island and high adventure. Wanna come? You a captain? Hardly. More of a child. I'm the mighty pirate who defeated LeChuck. And what do you have to show for it? I've got a ton of cool stories. Treasure, immense mounds of gold and diamonds, solid gold scepters of power, anything? Well, I've got these nickels. Wooden? Uh, yeah. Some treasure hunter you are. You couldn't find gold in a jewelry shop. Hmm. I bet I could find gold on this very island. How much would you bet? Well, I've got these nickels. Right. Come back when you have some real treasure to show me. Oh, but I can find some, I bet you. I already know where I can get some. I've seen it at least once already. How'd you break into the hairstyling industry? I saw an ad to join a barbershop quartet. Got a problem with that? No, that must be very rewarding work. What's that supposed to mean? Mean? Just that... You know, cutting hair and um, singing must be just a lot of fun. It's like a party every day. Whoop, whoop. Some days I just don't know how to contain my joy. I get giddy and the laughter bubbles out of me like a sparkling fountain of mirth and gaiety. Okay, new topic. Right? Pirate stories. Got any? Okay, here's a story. I started out as a crewman on the raging tightwad, sailing out of Puerto Pollo. The captain was a master treasure hunter, a diviner from some ancient secret society. He had some weird fifth sense when it came to finding objects of value. Fifth sense? Don't you mean sixth sense? No. By some cruel trick of nature, he was born without taste buds. Oh. But his other senses took over and gave him an uncanny ability to find treasure. We left port without a map, guided only by the captain's keen senses. We spent the first week going around in circles until we realized the crew's gold earrings were throwing the captain off. After we tossed all our jewelry, gold coins, and belt buckles overboard, we got back on course. Oh, jeez. Did you ever find any treasure? So we sailed going. for two years. Two and years. And finally started back to Plunder Island. Mm -hmm. But just as we started to doubt him, he paid off. We found sunken treasure right off the coast. What Wait, do you know? It, was it an enormous pile of jewelry and gold coins and belt buckles at the bottom of the bay? Exactly. How did you know that? I just had hmm. a feeling. Yeah. All right. Uh, crappy guy there. Say, uh, what you eating there? Jawbreaker. Is it good? Yep. You don't say much, do you? Nope. Oh, he says a lot, actually. All right, man. Are you sure you don't want to join my crew? You still haven't proven you can find anything of value. 
come right, back right, right. when you have some real treasure to show me. To say my solid gold wife is gone. <laughs> Fiance. It's anyway. been a pleasure. Bye. Captain Rottingham, huh? Ahoy there! I'm Guybrush Threepwood. I see, and I don't care. I'm a mighty pirate. Ha! What do you mean, ha? I mean just what I said. Ha! If you're a mighty pirate, then I'm bold. I'm mighty enough to defeat LeChuck twice. LeChuck? Ha! Even Le if he's Chuck? dead, there's just no <laughs> excuse for that hair. Hmm. So you're a ship captain, huh? Not just any ship captain. Don't tell me you've never heard of Captain Rene Rottingham. No. I've never heard of Captain Rottingham. I'm only the most cunning and well-groomed captain ever to say of the Caribbean. It's your vein. All right. Well, how'd you like to join my crew? Me serve on your crew? Please don't make me break into hysterical laughter while this buffoon is working on my hair. Buffoon? Did you know you're starting to go gray? I most certainly Ooh. am not. Why don't you want to join my crew? I serve on the no man. Oh, boy. Now, just one second. Yeah, I gotta be at least 20 or 21 by now. I'm going to be the man to find it. And I'll look absolutely stunning while I'm doing it. Well, I didn't want you on my crew anyway. That's your loss. And boy, lose the ponytail. It's so last year. I like my ponytail. Fire! Run for your life! I'm sure the authorities probably have the situation under control. But just in case, Baba, more moisturizer. Oh my goodness. Rabbit dogs are on the loose! Get out, now! I don't hear anything. There are no rabbit dogs on the loose. That's just what they want you to think. There's an axe-wielding maniac at the door! Flee! Perhaps you should offer yourself as a sacrifice so the rest of us may be saved. Ah, <laughs> man. The calls are coming from within the barbershop. You must get out immediately. I have no idea what you're talking about. Leave us alone. I just noticed there's scissors stuck in the ceiling. Huh. Uh, don't get me wrong. Gray hair suits you. It doesn't... I mean, of course it would. But uh, I don't have to worry about that for several years. If I were you, I'd worry more about those split ends. Split ends? I love Ooh, you know he I is vain. Men for comments less slanderous than that. Okay, okay. You seem busy. I'll come back later. I don't really want to talk to you. I want to talk to Haggis here. I know his name is Haggis now. I'm not trying to be racist. I looked it up. <laughs> ah, yes, perfect. Boop, boop. Boop, boop. Brush that shit into your hair. Holy infestation! You've been struck with the hair demons. What are you talking about? The cursed head vermin. The scourge of every hygienic sailor on the seven seas. Mm -hmm. That's a lie. Sure as I'm standing here, they're wriggling about your scalp like a pack of wretched sea lions. Good analogy. This calls <laughs> drastic action. I'm bringing in old Ironsides. No, no, let's not be too rash. Oh, you don't have Rich. a choice, buddy. That's a bad sign. There's yep. no time to lose. I'm going to have to amputate. No, <laughs> no, you'll ruin my hair. No choice. Get the hell out. Hello. Now you seem free to talk. Ahoy there. I'm Guybrush Threepwood, here to serve all your mighty pirate needs. Pleasure to meet you, Guybrush. I am Haggis McMutton of the Clan McMutton. Haggis McMutton. I sure could use a haircut. Have a seat, laddie, and I'll do you up with a fine quaff. Mm, sounds good. I can't reach it. I'm too low. Hmm. Yeah. Uh-oh. Ugh, blast that ineffectual paperweight. I'll have to go find another. 
But what about my haircut? Keep your skirt on, lad. Yeah. I'm gonna get those scissors. Thank you. Speed it up. Yoink. I don't even know why I need them, but... That was a series of events that seemed to have worked, so I might as well take it, right? Here we go. Well, I searched the whole island, and I couldn't have found a single rock for a paperweight. Oh. I suppose I'll just have to eyeball your haircut. Uh -oh. I just remembered I have another appointment. Oh, I was going to give you a French braid, too. Hmm. It would have looked pretty. All right, buddy. I'm not sure why I needed all that stuff, but I took it anyway just because they let me. So, uh... How did you become a barber pirate? I spent ten years at sea on board the HMS Anathema, the fastest ship in the Scottish Navy. So how did that help you become a barber pirate? Yeah. It was a clip of ship. Ah. Oh. <laughs> ah, puns. Do you know any rousing pirate stories? Well, there is the story of the secret of Bulky Island. We were a crew of two score men under the command of Big Jake McJuggernaut, the most powerful captain on the seas. One night in port, Captain Jake heard the tale of an enormous treasure buried somewhere on Bulky Island. We set sail and landed on the island within a fortnight and found the treasure the next morning. Hmm. Bulky Island? Where's that? You won't find it on any map. Captain Jake took the location of the treasure to his grave. Oh, it was a beautiful sight. A tremendous chest made of solid gold. Big Jake leapt into the hole and wrapped his sinewy arms around the chest. He gathered his resolve, counted to three, filled his lungs and lifted with all his might. The sound of his back cracking brought a grimace to even the most steel-hearted crewmen. By nightfall, the lot of us were lying on the beach, writhing in pain. Huh. Why didn't you set up a system of ropes and pulleys? Right? That would have been the weak man's way out. The pirate Angus McFulcrum had followed us to Bulky Island, wanting the treasure for himself. Angus the McFulcrum? Used a lever and took a fulcrum. A chest, laughing at us as he carried it to his ship. Because and he used my a fulcrum. Proud, Captain McJuggernaut died in traction, cussing himself for not being strong enough. It wasn't that. The other guy used freaking a fulcrum. He lifted it out. Smart. Haggis. That's an unusual name. I suppose it is, but Haggis is just a nickname. The given name is heart, liver, and kidneys boiled in the stomach of the animal McMutton. Oh, so your parents uh. were expecting a girl. Yay. <laughs> that was literally what's in Haggis. How would you like to join my crew? You seem like a nice enough sort, Guybrush, but a man cannot serve as my captain unless he earns me respect. And how would a man go about doing that? By besting me in a time-honored test of strength. An in-your-face, no-holds-barred cage match to the death? No, I'm talking about the traditional Highland display of strength and virility. Caber the caber toss. I was about to say caber toss. Uh, alright. What in the world is a caber? The caber is a large tree trunk. We mm -hmm. go to the field of competition, and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. That's just about the stupidest sport I've ever heard of. And I watch cable television. It's fun. Hey, but you cannot fun argue to watch, with anyway. tradition. It's pretty amazing to see. Could you explain this caber tossing concept again? The caber is a large tree trunk. We go to the field of competition, and each of us heaves the caber as far as he can. The man whose caber goes the farthest is the winner. Does it count bounces? Let's do it. Sounds great. Let's do it. Oh, shit. For real? Oh, not bad. All right. Woo! I would never follow such a weak captain. Boo on you. All right, then. All right. Well, now, we've got a bunch of new stuff. Scissors, for some reason, and a rock. I'm sure all this will come in handy at some point or another. 
We have to figure out a way to do the caber toss now. We've got to figure out a way to get gold, and I'm not even sure what the... Oh, and we got to find a way to be uh, defeat him, like in a gentleman's game. Um, so those will be the people we'll probably have in our crew then. I like it, though. I'm fine with that. Anyway, if you guys are enjoying this, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification button so you'll know when I'll have videos coming out. If you'd like to support the channel, check out patreon.com slash ASRG. Otherwise, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a great day. Hey, fellow Asians. Don't forget to like and subscribe by clicking the button in the center of the screen. You can also find the last video by clicking the button to the left. And you can take a look at some of the other stuff I've done by clicking the button to the right. Hope you enjoyed the video. And have a good day.